Yeah! Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Nady, and today we're gonna be trying out the Lunar Butete Contour Palette Glosses and New Brushes. As you beautiful people know, this is about the products, not the people behind them. Any tiff you may have with them, please cast it away because this is a channel of positive energy, okay? Thank you. Oh, my little chocoholics, how you doing today? I hope wherever you're at in the world, you're having a marvelous day so far. I myself am doing very good. I've got my little shake going. I'm just waking up for the day, but it is so pretty outside. No, it's very dark and gloomy, but under all these lights, it's like I'm in the sunshine. But I woke up to a loud pounding on my door. It was the mailman dropping off a big old package. I do remember seeing this launch on Instagram. It seemed like it had quite a few items in it, and they did send this to me as PR, so thank you very, very much. This brand and everyone behind it knows that just because something is free doesn't mean that I'm gonna love it. We do not suck any kind of dick or titty on this channel. We only give honest feedback. So, it looks like there are quite a few new brushes. I do really like their brushes. I can't remember if I reviewed them or not, but they are very good. And then it looks like we also have a liquid lipstick and then three new lip glosses. Oh my gosh, he finally launched a clear one. Thank you. Usually just as like a lip balm when I don't have lip chap near me, I'll go in with the neuter one. It's got like gold flecks in it and that works fine but if I could have a clear one that would be my preference but it looks like we get a berry tone a rosy tone and then the clear one and a lovely kind of mauvey nude I have no idea if that's a new shade but I do know that the contour palette is brand new although I'm not sure if that's just a contour palette or if it's a bronze palette too look at all those sexy delicious beasts on there oof oh no it looks like there are some bronzing shades in here as well so that's nice well, maybe if I fucking read the thing they sent I'd know okay so the light side is creamy, highly blendable brightening powders that deliver radiance blurring with a long wear skin-like finish. And then the other side is creamy, neutral toned bronzing powders. Okay, cool. I don't know how much the palette retails for. Oh, it smells like coconut. I know I just saw that somewhere. Where did I see that? Yes, dreamy coconut scent. Very interesting. But for the brushes, it looks like the smaller ones start at $10, then $12, then $14, then $15, and end at $18. Not too bad for brushes. Let's dive into these a little bit shall we? We get a nice little Lunar Butete case. Easily could house your maybe sexual toys. I don't know, it's just an idea. Oh, damn, some of these brushes might be able to be used as those. Oh, look at the size of that bitch. Wow. Oops, took its little wig cover off. Oh my gosh. Oh shit, these are really cold for being outside. Oh, damn. <gasps> Oh, wow. That is really nice. Is it Ulta that has the big It cosmetic brushes or is it Sephora? Wherever it is, I go in there and I just run my hand across that big fluffy brush and this feels very similar. Oh, that is divine. Whoa. If I ever become like a multi-billionaire and like money is no issue, I want a bed made out of these fibers that just like engulfs me and like vibrates. Here we have the double ended brush. I'm not sure if these are real fibers. Let me quick look on the interwebs. Purely synthetic, cruelty free, all that good jizzy jazz. They did a great job at emulating real fibers though because these do look like real fur, but they feel like a very good quality fur. The only way that I can tell they're synthetic is that they're just like super fucking soft and for this price you could never get this soft of a real fur brush. Oh, those are lovely. Is this a foundation brush? Yes, it is. Oh, I can't wait to use that. I do like my foundation brushes to be a bit more dense. This is kind of on the fluffy side, but because it is flat topped, it does kind of feel dense when you stipple shit in and that's kind of how I've been applying my foundations lately. But this bitch is chunky. Look at her. Wow. It's still ergonomic and comfortable to hold and it does have a nice weight to it. Like it kind of has a heavy weight weight back here so it balances in your hand. I like that. Sometimes brushes are so freaking light that they just like float out of your hand. And when it comes to eyeshadow brushes, I don't mind that. But bigger face brushes, I like them to have a little bit of heft to them. And here we have, I'm assuming a highlighter brush. Yes, a fluffy light face brush. I'm not exactly certain what I would use this for. Maybe for like dusting powder away. But it too feels very soft and floofy. And then here we have the last three brushes. This one actually is a highlighter brush. And then we have a cream brush and a slightly angled contour brush. All of them have very long bristles. They're super hella fluffy. So if you like that texture, you'd probably like these. But if you want like a more dense compact brush, these probably aren't going to be the brushes for you. But these seem pretty versatile. They're like right in the middle of being hard and soft. <laughs> They're semi. Like you could stipple with them and the fibers do remain pretty hard or you could buff things out. I don't know. I like them. Then we have the glossy gloss. My lip gloss be popping. Let's first go in with Jewel 
which is a really pretty deep berry. She does appear to have gotten a little bit separated in transit, so I'm gonna give it a tiny shake. Mmm, it smells lovely. It's kind of like caramel corn or candy corn, like a light vanilla smell. Mmm, just makes me want to like jam it down my throat. Okay, so gloss gloss, here we go. Oh, wow. That actually has some really good pigmentation to it. Oh my god, I'm making a fucking mess. Let me zoom you in so you can actually see. Hold on. Honestly, just looking at this, I wouldn't know that I don't have a lipstick underneath this. It's super pigmented. Very, very pretty. Extremely comfortable. Just like all their glosses. I like it. What do you think? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, madam. Next, we have Divine. Ooh, that's pretty. It's like a piece of bubblegum fucked a slushy while a Muppet was watching and came out with this. That's really cute. It's like baby pink with sparkles. I like that. It's a little bit different looking than the picture, but I actually might prefer this one. This one seems to have a little bit more color to it, whereas in the picture, it seems kind of pale. And then on the lips, it doesn't really look like much of anything other than like a clear gloss with a slight shimmer. I really like this one. Like this is probably going to replace the gold flecked one. Well, after I run out of the clear one. Something is jiggling in here. What is that? Anyways, once again, same formula. Very, very comfortable on the lips. And I think I probably always say this whenever I'm reviewing these lip glosses or a lip gloss that I like. These make fan freaking tastic nighttime toppers, like go in with a heavy balm or something and then top your lips off with this. And then when you wake up, I promise you, your lips will be so soft and supple and smooth. If you have animals, you'll probably end up with like dog or cat fur stuck to your lips, but still the end result is very much worth it. I wonder if this has any like actual color to it. Hold on, let me put a little bit right there. It's kind of clear with the slightest pink hue. I feel as though that would definitely be very universal. Yeah. Last for the glossy glossies, we have Crystal Kiss. And it's the clear one. Oh my gosh, that looks like mold or something in there. Obviously, it's not mold. It just looks really cool and fluffy, doesn't it? Okay, so here we go. Mmm. Oh my god, that's way too much. An interesting thing with this one is it actually feels quite a bit thicker than their normal formulas. Maybe Maybe it's just my mind, but I'm not a huge fan of like super sticky glosses. I like the more oily glossies and that's kind of how these normally feel, but this is a little bit thick, but this does feel very practical for being clear because it feels like super adhered to my lips versus the colorful ones, which I think you're kind of supposed to use on their own. It kind of feels as though you could put it over a lipstick without like fucking your lipstick up. And so if this is a different formula, that's probably why, but I don't think I like it quite as much as I thought I would. And it honestly could be literally the exact same, but I kind of feel like it isn't. It just feels different. It's not unpleasant, and it does look really pretty on camera. Let me wipe this one off. Oh yeah, that has to be different because the other glasses, they just wipe off smoothly, and that one was a little bit more difficult to rub off, which I guess means it probably lasts a good while. I kind of want to try it over their lipstick to see if it does indeed melt it, so let's try this. That's very nice. Again though, it doesn't really look like how it looks in the picture. In the picture, it just seems to be a tad bit darker and more on the rosy mobby side. But for me, it's definitely almost like my skin tone. I think I would just need like a lip liner or something for this. But even though this is a lighter shade, it doesn't seem splotchy. I don't feel like I'm gonna have to go in with a second coat. It's very comfortable on the lips. I'm able to like rub them together and blend everything out. It feels the exact same as all of their other lipsticks. They kind of feel flexible, kind of satiny. Very nice. What do we think, y'all? Mmm, pretty. So now that it's dried down, let me go ahead and apply some of the clear gloss. Wait, is it dried down? Hold on, it needs another second. Mmm. Let's top it off with this clear gloss. Oh yeah, okay, so it does kind of eat the lipstick away. Kind of expected that, but it doesn't seem as though it's eating it quite as dramatically. It is still kind of dissolving it though, but because that gloss is, hold on, but because that gloss is so thick, it doesn't feel as though it's spreading and like feathering. Everything is just like staying put. So I guess I like the thicker texture for putting it over lipsticks. In fact, I'm actually gonna be doing some somebody's makeup in Nashville in a couple weeks. I'm gonna put that in the little makeup box. So yes, here we have the lipstick and the lip gloss. I think this is a lovely combination. I'm gonna keep this on while I do the rest of my face just to see how it wears. So let's dive into our final little goodie here. We have very pretty packaging. I can see Russia from my doorstep. Ooh, this actually is really cool. It has the iconic little moon on it. She is three-dimensional, kind of textured here. And very hollow sexual. Christine would be proud. Open 
this little mama up. Oh, it's got a great magnetic closure, which is perfect for traveling. Not that this is like the easiest thing to travel with. One, she's kind of bulky and two, she's kind of heavy, but I'm not sure if the pans are able to be depotted or not. Okay, anyways, here we go. Let's take away the little protector. I'm not sure if there's titanium dioxide in this because I'm looking at my monitor and they actually look like they have a tiny bit of flashback. In person, they look very juicy and saturated and pretty, but on camera, they look kind of on the cooler side. Hold on, let me look at the ingredients. For anyone wondering, titanium dioxide is typically what causes flashback in like foundations or concealers. So it does look like some of these, if not all of them, do contain titanium dioxide. So just keep that in mind if you are going to be working with flash. But this one right now in person before I add a bunch of saturation to the video, it does look a little bit like a flashback merry moment. But also if you're not going to be working with flashes, who cares? And I guess this has like a coconutty smell. Let's see. Mmm, I don't smell anything. The smell from my lip gloss is so overpowering, I don't smell anything except that. Oh wait, no, no, I can kind of smell it. Oh, it smells like tanning oil. Mmm, that smells kind of good. It reminds me of like a beach or summer. And it's not like the Too Faced kind of fragrance where you open it and you're like overcome with the smell of a bakery. This just is very, very light. Ooh, and there's a big ass mirror on the top too. I didn't even see that. How the fuck do I miss that? Oof, shit, I need to do my brows. Okay, we'll just ignore that. All right, let me just do mini Miniature swatches here before we dive into this. Let's feel bright sky. Ooh, those feel very soft. Pink sky, yellow sky, and peach sky. All of those feel super smooth. They don't feel buttery. They just feel nice and powdery. They seem to swatch pretty well. Here are a few more of the shades. Shit, I'm running out of room. We'll put that right there. And there we go. Yes, those are quite nice. They aren't like overly pigmented. I do have a couple contour and bronzy palettes where I'm a little bit scared to dip into them because they're just way too freaking much. Like just the slightest dip and it's pigment overload and it's kind of difficult to be consistent with them. So I stray away from them. But just from swatches, this seems like a good mixture of filler and pigment. Not too much, not too little. There's the deepest one. There is the lightest one. Very nice. And I'm very happy to say that once they're kind of on the finger or blended out, they don't really smell anymore. Not that the smell was offensive, I just don't like smelly shit on my face. Like y'all remember when, I think it was the Too Faced peach palette or the peach blush came out and it was so fucking pretty but people didn't want to use it because the smell was so fucking strong. Okay, so I'm just gonna set that to the side and let's go ahead and do our face base using these brushes. I'm gonna go in with my usual shit. I'm gonna start off with the Nimia Skin Prep. All I have on my face right now is a little bloopy of the Fenty Fat Water. Is that what it's called? One of my fabulous friends suggested that product to me and holy shit, no regerts. It is beautiful on the skin. By far my favorite Fenty product. Mm, yes. And then for primer, I'm gonna go in with the Laura Mercy Gay Pure Canvas Primer. This is the blurring one. And then for foundation, I'm gonna go in with my favorite, the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless. We'll take our very chunky little brush, dip it onto the back of my hand, and here we go. Ready? Wait, we could be closer. Hold on. There we go. That's a little bit better. So when I apply this foundation for like everyday use, I go in with a stippling brush, and I'm able to get pretty decent coverage with it. And I think it's because a lot of the product isn't sucked up into the brush but when I used this brush it gave me a beautiful finish but it soaked up quite a bit of the product because this is so floofy. See I'm a little bit torn because I feel like the finish of this foundation right now on my skin looks much better than when I apply it with literally any other tool. However this seemed to have soaked up a good bit of product. Like there is a lot of foundation that's left in there that I can't get to it's just calling my name. But the way that this looks on my skin is really pretty. So it's like, do I use a little bit more product for a pretty finish? Or do I use less product and save a few pennies and not quite look as nice? I would rather look nice. Let me go in with just a teeny tiny bit more. It's not as though this amount of coverage isn't fine. I think it totally works. I went in with a little bit more than that the first time and normally like that is too much. So let me see how she builds up. See, it just gets like sucked into this brush. And that's kind of why I typically go for a less fluffy brush when I'm applying foundations or a stippling brush where it's not going to get like sucked into the fibers. Oh, but see layered up that really does look quite nice. I have the same amount of coverage that I would get when I apply it with any other brush, but I have a beautiful second skin finish. So let me know down in the comments below. Would you rather sacrifice more product to have a prettier finish with a brush like this? Or would you rather sacrifice how good it looks on your skin to save more product? I guess for me, because this stuff is so inexpensive, 
I don't necessarily mind using a little bit more if this is how beautiful it looks on my skin. I do think it's kind of a combination of a lot of things here, the skin prep, the primer, and that product. And so everything just works together really well. And then this brush is just like the cherry on top. Even though this brush does kind of shake up a good bit of product, I actually think I really like it. Like this does look beautiful on my skin. What do you think? Did I miss a whole bunch of areas? Probably. Yeah, that's a nice brush. I'm gonna fuck with that some more. <laughs> Maybe literally too. Look at that thing. She got some girth. Fork and squee squee. Hopefully this isn't too dark for me. Everything looks super light in the tube, but then when I pull the product out, it's like deeper. I haven't tried this in a while. This is the Bare Minerals, I don't know, this. So let's just try a little bit under here. Just kind of do a little highlighting with it. Okay, this is a lot of product. I think I might be oxidizing. I don't know. I'm gonna take the fluffy cream brush and start blending it out and see how she goes. Oh, this is very comfortable underneath the eyes. Wow. And it too does soak up a lot of product. However, it is blending things out very nicely. It's just kind of getting rid of some of the coverage just because most of the product is now on this brush. So in all honesty, I would probably rather blend out a cream contour with this versus what I'm doing right now. It just seems as though it eats quite a bit of the product up. Like literally almost all of my concealer is now in this thing versus cream contour, which I'm not trying to get coverage out of. I'm trying to get color. And so I don't really care if some of it does get soaked up into this. You know what I mean? Like, does that make sense? But regardless, this does still blend things out very, very nicely. My under eyes look flawless and airbrushed. So yeah, even though this did soak up quite a bit. I don't mind the way this looks, but for my under eyes, I probably won't be using this again. However, should we try a little cream contour? Wait, no, I'm gonna try the palette for contour, even though it is kind of bronzy. I at least wanna be able to see it, so I'm gonna skip contour. And normally at this point, I would go in with a setting powder underneath my eyes, but I'm not really sure if that's kind of what this is also used for, so we can try it. They suggest using the little baby small side for the lighter shades, so I don't know which color should we use. I'm thinking maybe pink sky, I don't know. Ooh, that picks up very nicely though. Pretty much everything sticks onto the brush. There is a little bit of kickback, but for the most part, it stays inside the pan versus just like blowing everywhere. Let's tap that off and here we go. You know what? I think I may have actually tapped off a little bit too much. Hold on. Let's re-dip. Okay, there we go. And here we place that right there. Oh, you know what? This might have not been the best color choice for me. I kind of forgot that around this area is a little bit red on me. So I probably want to combat that with something on the more yellowy side. Let me dust all that product off and let's dip into yellow sky and let's try that on this side oh see now that's just really freaking yellow on me maybe some bright sky over that oh wow well it does indeed brighten we can tell that and it is very smooth seeming like the formula seems quite nice however I probably should have powdered before because along the edges, it is kind of turning a little bit orangey. Just for shits and giggles, let me take a little bit of the peach sky on the other side. See, uh, that one isn't the best for me because it's really showcasing the purple underneath my eyes. The yellow side, I do think looks fine though. The formula seems decent on both sides. I think I'm just having that little bit of issue because I didn't powder my face. So let me take this big ass powder brush and dip into a tiny bit of Laura Mercier. And then what I like to do with a big fluffy brush is kind of tap the base so that the powder goes into the brush versus flying everywhere. And now with this big ass thing, we can just like gently go over the face. And I'm actually also gonna take it underneath the eyes. I'm just gonna go everywhere. Oh, I don't know if this is doing anything, but this is almost like therapeutic. Oh yes, bitch. So that instantly set everything. My face feels like a million times better. And I'm pretty sure that I just wiped away like all the under eye highlights. So let's retry that. I think with this one, I kind of want to try nude sky. I have no idea if this will be a little bit too deep on me, but it almost seemed like the more highlighty side was just a little bit on the light side. I think that might actually be like my skin color. So let's just dip into bright sky. I know this is a lot of product, but it's not like it's caking up or anything. Oh, see bright sky is definitely much better for me.
me. You can actually tell that there's some highlighting action going on. So I'm gonna take that on both sides now. And with my face being powdered, this is laying down so much better. It's just like melting into my skin. This is just very, very pleasant to use. I do want to reiterate though, I'm not positive how camera friendly these are gonna be. Like in my monitor, I just see a weird strip right there. But in person, it looks fantastic. Like I have no complaints. So I don't know that I could recommend this for photography, but for like everyday use, I do think this would be fine. I'm also not certain if some of these are a little bit shimmery. I actually think bright sky might be because underneath my eyes look very metallic. Did I fuck this up? No, it doesn't say it has like a shimmery quality to it, but it definitely does. It doesn't look bad or anything. I just don't normally put anything shimmery underneath my eyes. Now for the other side, they do suggest that you go in with a bigger fluffy brush, but I want to go in with this brush because it's so tiny. And according to this, you can use this shade right in the middle, either for deep skin tones or to deepen any of these shades up. And I don't know if maybe I should like very sparingly go in with that for contour and then blend it out with one of these more bronzy shades. Well, before I fuck anything up, let's try going in with one of these bronzier things. So maybe like this bronze sky right here, a very good amount goes on the brush. We can tap up the excess and here we go. Ooh, nice color. Very, very warm, which is kind of the point of a bronzer. And even though it's going onto something powdered, it's sticking down pretty well. Yas, that's very pretty. Oh gosh, that one area of my face where nothing ever sticks to. Does anybody else have that? Gonna take a little bit more because why the fuck not? So here we have the bronzier side. Here we have the side with nothing on it. Do you see a difference? Well, this side just has a little bit more dimension and color to it. Check a little bit down the schnoz underneath the jawbone. And yeah, very nice, very simple and quick and easy. Just like me. I guess just out of curiosity, I kind of want to try deep sky just as a little bit of a contour. So I'm going to gently go, oh my God, that was way too much. I need to tap off more. I just very lightly dipped in too. Fuck. Okay. So now let me try blending this out. We'll see how she works. That's very easy to use. I don't necessarily mind the color. Like if I were going to do a glam chiseled look, but for like every day when I'm not doing an eye look, I would probably stick maybe with this side. If I even use bronze, but otherwise, that doesn't look that bad. Other than my little missing spot right there. Right? Cute? Maybe? Or does it look like shit? I don't know. Let me know. I like this brush for applying my contour way more than I liked this brush for applying the highlight. Honestly, I would probably apply a blush with this side and then an actual highlighter on my cheekbone with this side. That would make a little bit more sense for me personally, but I mean, you can use it however the fuck you want. Actually, why don't I try applying a little bit of blush with this? So let's dip into the Moon Prism palette. And I feel like really the only color that we might see today is like either this or that. So let's dip into her. Actually, you know what? I'm going to mix both of these and it picks up very, very nicely. So let's try to tap this right over that bronzer and see how these play. Oh, see, that might be a little bit too light for me. So I guess let's dip into this guy right here and maybe mix it with some twilight just to add some color. All right, now let's go in right there. Oh yeah, that is so much better. I love this thing as a blush brush. You could use it as a contour brush if you wanted, but for my face, it's just a little bit too big. And because of the fluffiness, for me, using it this way just makes a little bit more sense. But these formulas go together really, really well. I don't love the color choice. Like, I probably would have rather had, like, a pinkier blush, but I wanted to use a product from this brand. Let me go in on the other side with a different blush. I'll try to get as much product off of this brush as I can. So let's dip right into there. These do pick up very, very well. And here we go over here. Yes, that is just so nice to use. And this is like the only time when I'm grateful that these fibers do kind of suck shit up. Oh my god, there's like a big glob of it. Because blush is one of those things that is super easy to overdo. And even when you pick up an ass ton like what I just did, it still starts off by applying lighter. And then the more you tap it, the heavier it becomes. So you're kind of able to gauge it a little bit better versus like going in and it just being like a clown the instant you put it on. So yeah, definitely better as a blush brush. And let's use the other end as a highlighter brush. This is, once again, another Lunar Butete palette. And I know there is already under eye highlighter on that, but I don't think it really matters. Let's see. Shall we dip into Medusa? Right on the cheekbone. That is very nice as a highlighter brush. You can just take the other side and kind of tap it out and go back and forth. But because we do have the other highlighter brush, let's just see how it compares. Oh, 
You know what? I totally like the actual highlighter brush for a highlighter way more than that other one. So I suppose that's why this is called a highlighter brush. I mean, both brushes worked fine. I still have a good highlight going on, but I just keep rubbing this side all over my face. It just feels so good. So lastly, let's check on our lips. They actually still look very, very good. I did pass over them a few times with a brush. My bad on that, but even so, the gloss is still there. The lipstick isn't being eaten away. It's not like splitting or cracking or anything. It still looks really good. It doesn't feel like there's anything on my lips. Well, no, it does feel like there's a gloss on my lips, but it doesn't feel gummy. It just feels like there's a nice balm on there. It's actually a very pretty combination. I like this color with that clear lip gloss. So my loves, final thoughts on this collection. So this palette, I love how light it goes. I love that there's medium tones. I love that there's deep tones. No matter who you are, you could probably find a color in here that would work with your skin. However, it is very, very big. It's very, very bulky. There's no way that anyone can use everything in here, unless maybe you're gonna use them as eyeshadows. I don't necessarily have an issue with the formulas. It's basically how heavy and big and bulky this thing is, which is often kind of an issue when you have a big face palette. I kind of wish that they came out with like three or four different palettes and you got like the light shades, the medium shades, the medium deep shades, and then the deep deep shades. I guess that would have made more sense because I don't think I can depot these. Yet I would love to use this on people, but just the size of it would kind of deter me from like bringing it on a plane. The formula seemed great. Do not apply it over something moist. Wait till your face is dry and powdered because I noticed that it added quite a bit of texture underneath my eyes when it hit something moist and it kind of changed colors. So be careful with it. They're not setting powders. I don't know that they ever claimed to be. They might actually be good for setting powders if you went in with like a sponge and pressed them into your eyes, but just setting them under your eyes with a brush, not good, at least over something moist. But in all honesty, if you're gonna apply this under your eyes, I would probably either go in with a sponge that's dry or a poof like this so that you can really press it in. That to me has always been the best method of application for that kind of shit. But otherwise, I don't really have that many complaints. I love that you get a stark ass white in there just so that you can lighten any of the lighter shades up. And I love that you get a deeper color in here so that you can darken any of these shades up. It makes sense. I think my only complaint is the size, which normally I'm the last person to complain about the size. <laughs> the colorful lip glosses I think are really, really pretty. They're good tones. I would totally use the shit out of both of these. The clear one is good, but to me it's a little bit different in formula, so I'm not digging on that one quite as much as I thought I would. But as a lipstick topper versus it being on its own, that's where I see it flourishing. So it is a good product, it just isn't what I expected. The lipstick, it's the same formula as all the other lipsticks they've come out with. It's very, very comfortable on the lips. It doesn't feel as though you're wearing anything. It wears really well usually. And it seemed to have played nicely with that lip gloss. No, this shade isn't gonna work for everyone, I would almost recommend it as like an ombre highlight in the center of your lips. Like if you have a deep mauve, that would be so stinking pretty. Then the brushes. I think my absolute favorite brushes out of this is this huge one. It just feels so freaking soft. It's like a puppy. And then I really liked this foundation brush. I know it ended up sucking a good bit of the product up, but the way that it made my skin look was heavenly. I don't really even care if I have to use twice as much of this product because this is so inexpensive. And if it can make this look like a really expensive foundation, who gives a rat's ass? Like, slap that shit on me, baby. The other brushes seemed pretty okay. I didn't love this for my under eye can squee squee. Like I said, I would probably use this more as like a contour brush. And then the actual contour brush, it was pretty good. It applied everything evenly. I have no complaints. The highlighter brush was the tits, man. And I do like this double-ended brush, but I don't think I'll use it for its intended purpose. I loved it for blush. I did like this side for like a more minimalistic highlight. I really don't foresee myself ever applying that face powder underneath my eyes with this again. I didn't get a chance to use this longer brush, but I don't even know what I would use this for. Maybe like dusting away excess powder here and there. But yeah, overall, this collection was very, very good. Really not here to sell you on anything. I'm just testing shit out. So you'll have to let me know how do you think it looks on the camera? Do I look nice and bronzed? I think I do. I actually really like that color combination and I don't mind the under eye highlight. And I don't think I said how much that palette was, but it's $49. And then it looks like you can get the entire bundle every thing that I got today for 150. Okay, so I just filmed my outro and everything and I thought, why the fuck didn't I try applying anything with this little poof poof just to see how it looks rather than suggesting it and having somebody try it and it might look like shit. So I'm gonna take this and let's dip into Peach Sky down here. Ooh, no, that's way too dark. It looks a lot darker against something light. Okay, let's try Bright Sky. Okay, yeah, that's a 
little bit better. And I know everything is set into place already, but we can still try this right about there. Oh my God goodness. This looks so much better applied with this versus a brush. First of all, like look at the amount that I'm able to put on. Yeah, that is so the way to go. Like, am I wrong in thinking like, boom. All right, so future Nady is saying goodbye. Let's go back to old me. But yes, there we go, my loves. Thank you so much for being here. You know that I love having you to the moon and back. And thank you to Lunar Butete for sending this my way and for letting me be honest because a lot of brands don't care for that shit. All right, Alright, so y'all know my little outro. If you'd like to support me and my channel just a little bit more, please feel free to join us over on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash poplux. There you get videos a day early. You get Patreon-only content. Plus, best part, it is cheap, fun, and fancy just like me. And like always, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell down below so that you're notified anytime I upload a new video. Don't forget my newest collection of highlighters, including Black Ice, which does change from black to white, will be available again soon at thepoplux.com. Also, my latest album, Kiss of Fame, is available everywhere in line that music is sold. Thank you so much much to everyone who's supporting them. Comment down below, let me know what you thought of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at official and you can follow me online at thepoplux.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I will see you again soon. Bye.